All right, let's look at the three different ways to classify waves. And the first of these waves, ways is whether or not it requires a medium. Now, if it does require a medium, we call this a mechanical wave. And if it doesn't, we call this a electromagnetic wave. So mechanical waves, you know these a lot, right? You have water waves, sound waves. All of these require some physical vibration of the particles. But for an electromagnetic wave, it doesn't. And we need to understand this thing called the electromagnetic spectrum. And so all of these things travel at the same speed, C, which equals to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. All right. This is uh, the fastest known thing on Earth. All right. Uh, Make sure you understand that radio waves are the least energetic, so the least energetic, which means that they have the lowest frequency and the largest wavelength, right? And of course, if you go all the way here, energy is the highest here, so they have the highest frequencies and the smallest wavelength. Radio, micro, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, X-rays, and then gamma rays. Even within the visible spectrum itself, right? Red is the least energetic, and violet is the most energetic, all right? It's good to know the wavelength of red light, which is about 700 nanometers, and the wavelength of violet light, which is about 400 nanometers. Now, moving on, okay, another way to classify waves is whether or not they transfer energy. Now, if they do, we call these progressive waves, and if they don't, we call these stationary waves, right? We will talk a lot more about stationary waves in superposition, but uh, for now, everything is a progressive wave. So this wave form advances. It brings energy from one point to another. And lastly, okay, we classify waves also in terms of how the particles vibrate. Now, if the particles vibrate in a direction perpendicular to the wave propagation, then we call this a transverse wave. And if the particles vibrate parallel in the direction or to the direction of wave propagation, then we call this a longitudinal wave, right? A very common example of longitudinal waves is, of course, your sound waves. Now, um, transverse waves, right, which is the one that we are very, very used to looking at in wave representation, right? We see that the wave propagates in this way and your wave kind of looks like that. And so you can see that although the wave moves in this direction, your particles are moving up and down, which is perpendicular to the wave propagation. Longitudinal waves have a slightly different look, right? So if your wave is going like this, you may find that your particles go something like that. Okay, I'm just drawing a very quick one. Okay. You'll find that they go this way, this way, this way, this way. Right? They'll just kind of go in and out, in and out, in a direction that's parallel to the wave propagation. 